Hi. Now, in this question, it's all about finding turning points, the nature of turning points as well, by considering the second order differential. Now, if you're wanting to have a go at this, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. Don't forget, you can always check out my website, examsolutions.net, for tutorials on turning points, stationary points, whatever, okay? Now, we'll run through the question. What we've got here then is the curve C has equation Y equals six minus three X minus four over X cubed, where X doesn't equal zero. And we've got to use calculus to show that the curve has a turning point P when X equals root two. We'll just take this part of the question first of all. Using calculus means to use, say, differentiation. And that is what we're going to be doing here. We're going to differentiate y with respect to x. So if we start off with y equaling, let's just say we've got part a as well. We've got y equals 6 minus 3x. Now for this term here, minus 4 over x cubed, it needs to be modified. This is the same as 4 times 1 over x cubed. 1 over x cubed is x to the power minus 3. So we end up with minus 4 multiplied by x to the power minus 3. So we can differentiate this. If we differentiate it with respect to x, we therefore have dy by dx equals. Now, the differential of a constant 6 is 0. Differentiate minus 3x and you get minus 3 differentiate minus 4x to the minus 3 and you get four, minus 4 times minus 3 which is plus 12. Reduce the power by 1 and you've got x to the power minus 4. And it would be a good idea just to clean this term up. So we've got minus 3 for the first term here and for this term this is going to be 12 times 1 over x to the power 4 which is the same as 12 over x to the power 4. Now we should know that at a turning point, let's just write it in, at a turning point, and this is the same if it's a stationary point as well, but at a turning point, the gradient is going to be zero, and we get the gradient by dy by dx. So that means that we therefore have that minus three plus 12 over x to the power four must equal zero. And to work this out, what I'm going to do is times both sides by x to the power 4. So we then have minus 3 x to the power 4 and then plus 12 equals zero. So if we just come down here and carry on. Now if I was to add 3x to the power 4 to both sides would have 3x to the power 4 would equal 12 and divide then by 3 we end up with therefore x to the power 4 equals 4 and to get x we need to take the fourth root of 4 so the fourth root of 4 is written like that but we're taking uh, an even power here, okay, so we end up with plus or minus, so you be careful there just to remember that part there, plus or minus the fourth root of four then. And the fourth root of four is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of two. And we had to show that the curve had a turning point at the point P where x equals root 2. So we can say that therefore at P x equals the positive value root 2. Now in part B it says find the x-coordinate of the other turning point Q on the curve. Well the other x-coordinate has to be minus root 2. So for part B we've got that at Q, clearly X must be equal to minus then root two. Now in part C, 
we've got to find d2y by dx squared, the second differential of y. So we just need to differentiate dy by dx with respect to x. And so I'm going to take this part here. And if we differentiate this, we therefore have, well, minus 3 goes to 0, and you've got 12 times minus 4, which is going to be minus 48. So let's just put here d2y by dx squared equals minus 48. And then we subtract 1 from the power, so you're going to have x to the power minus 5, which is exactly the same as minus 48 over x to the power 5. Now, in the last part, part D, okay, we've got to state with justification the nature of each of these turning points, P and Q. And to do this, all we need to do is work out what the sign is when we substitute x equals plus root 2 and x equals minus root 2 into the d2y by dx squared. Remember, if you get a positive value, it's a minimum. And if it's a negative value, it's a maximum. So let's just start with at p. At p, we're considering x equaling root 2. So therefore, if we substitute this into d2y over dx squared, it's going to be negative 48, okay, all over x to the power 5. So we've got the square root of 2 all to the power 5. Now I'm not going to in fact work this value out. All I'm interested in is whether it's a positive value or a negative value. And the root 2 of to the power 5, that's going to be a positive value. 48 divided by a positive value is positive. Then you've got the negative out there, so it's going to be negative. It's going to be less than 0. So that means that at P, we have a maximum value. I'm going to write that it's a local maximum. You don't necessarily have to write the word local in, but uh, it just means in the vicinity of this point, then, we have got a maximum. We now need to go on to find out what the turning point is going to be at Q. So we do a similar method, and that is that at Q, we're testing the point where x equals negative root 2. And so we substitute this into d2y by dx squared, and we find we've got minus 48 divided by x, which is minus root 2, and this is to the power 5. Now, a negative number here to an odd power is going to be negative. So you've got minus 48 over a negative number. Negative over negative gives positive, greater than 0. So therefore, that's telling us that Q is a local minimum local minimum, and there you go. All right.